Hey guys, this is JP and welcome to Slasher X Games. So today I'm going to be talking about tile sets and what exactly those are and how they help us make our game look really cool. So basically because tile sets are purely graphic resources, they are very fast to draw and have very little overhead. So in order for us to turn a very dull sort of black and white room like this one into something more beautiful we can make the objects that the user collides with invisible and instead display something else in its place so what i've done is i've expanded our game room i've got my man over there i've created a view it's just one two eight oh seven twenty pretty standard there it is then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into our sprites here in our block let's open this up let's uh let's just recreate this There's a new 64 by 64. Let's make the opacity 100. There we go. Save that. Okay, center it. Fantastic. So if we go into there, they will be slightly transparent. Very cool. Okay, so let's import a background that we set as a tile sheet. So backgrounds, create background. Let's take user's tile sheet. Let's remove these horizontal tiling. Let's load our background. I got this from GameR2D.com. Check them out. Links in the description. So let's grab that. And that was a 64 by 64. There's our block. So, so we've got some floating ground. Then we've got some edge ground. Okay. Let's rename this to T-Set Ground. Cool. So that's step one. So now let's go into our game world. So open this up, zoom out a bit, we'll remove our grid, and we're going to head over to the tiles tab over here. Okay, so here we go, we've got all kinds of obstacles, we can jump over there, we've got these ravines over there, we can jump over those, we can run around, we're not going to fall over the edges of the sides of the map, that's pretty cool. So here we can use some side ground, here we can use some top ground, we can fill these up with some underground. And that'll look really cool. We can even make some floating ones up here. And I'll show you all about the different layers. Okay, so in tiles, we first select our tile set. There we go. And here we can select each individual image. That's pretty cool. So let's go all the way to the left. Let's work on this bit over here. So we're going to need some sort of one of these. Let's put that right at the top. And then let's repeat these all the way down. So we made our collision block transparent so that we can see where we're placing these tiles. And we're going to need one of these, one of these. Let's actually move these down, down, down. There we go, that looks really cool. There we go. And there. Okay, so far so good. So then let's carry this on. There we go. This one actually needs to be replaced with an edge, which comes down to one of these. No, not one of these, just a straight down. That one goes over here. Oh, actually, it's further on. There. This edge goes over there. Middle bit. Then we've got one of these. And so on. So you keep doing that for every little patch of ground that you can find. And slowly but surely, your world will start to come alive. So we can even make some uh, some ground here. Let's see. Do one of those. Do this whole area in that sort of style. So when the user is seeing this, it's not just black. And just like that, we've pretty much filled in all the ground that would have been replaced with these really ugly white blocks. Okay, cool. So that was all at layer 99. Now, like objects, tiles also have a depth. And that's how we can put some tiles behind others to make it appear like 
our game world has an extra dimension to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another layer. It's going to be layer 100. So just like objects, the smaller the depth, the closer it is to the camera. So if I add one here and call it 100, okay, and we can say hide other layers. See there, it hides all the other layers. And let's make some uh, some background columns over here. So let's take this down. Let's put this over here. Let's make quite a tall one. So the user isn't interacting with these. They just make the game will look really cool. Let's make it a somewhat thin one. Oopsie. There we go. And actually, let's make a floating one up here. That'll look interesting. Big floating one. Just like that. And to demonstrate layers a bit more, I'm going to create one that's behind here. So, 100, yeah. Let's put this behind all of these. Like that. Like that. Here we go. Let's put it going out of the map. Fill this ground in. Cool, so now if we show other layers, bam, that one appears behind this one. Cool, so once you've gone around making your game world look interesting, you can finally make your collision objects invisible. So let's accept this. I'm going to go to expand objects, object block. Let's make it invisible. Say OK and save. So let's jump into the action and let's test this out and we can see how adding tiles makes the game look so much more beautiful without adding too much overhead to the actual game. So there we go. We've made those ugly white blocks invisible and in their places we strategically placed some tiles and they look quite magnificent. Look at that. User has no idea that he's actually jumping on invisible blocks and these are just for show. Very cool. And there's the depth there. This one's clearly behind that one. Got no problems over there. Looks really cool. So that's pr pretty much the first step you'd have to take um, to make your game look pretty. I do invite you to fiddle around with the depths, with all kinds of other tiles, to make your game look complete. So if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Links are in the description. Check those out. If you want to try a really cool mobile game, have a look at Element Earth. It's on the Amazon App Store as well as as a demo. That is on the Google Play Store. Links are also in the description. If you like this video as well as many of my other ones that I have on display and would like to suggest future tutorials, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. If you would like to know how to make a multiplayer platform game, please check out my Game Maker Studio native networking series. Within it, we do create a very cool looking multiplayer platform game.